I've turned on the irrigation to the high tunnel. I'm about to walk over there and show you about these quick connects. The way I'm gonna irrigate the high tunnel, ultimately the valve to turn it on will be closer if I use the well water. And if I don't use the well water, I'm gonna be using the water catchment. I'm hoping to use that eventually. I'm not, I'm not really sure exactly how I'm gonna do it yet. I went ahead and turned the water on just a second ago. I'm walking over here and we'll show you these quick connects and how they work and uh, turn them on as well. So remember this water out here, this drip tape out here, there's a line going right behind me along with the comfrey and some of the comfrey crowns have started to grow some leaves. That's one of the reasons that the comfrey crowns are a little superior to the comfrey root cuttings. Comfrey root cuttings are really great. I think they're wonderful. They're small. They don't take up a whole lot of space, but these crowns, they're already growing leaves. I'll give you a close up here in just one second. In order to irrigate this, I don't have it connected to the same system on the water hose coming over here. We've got one of these quick and I'll take one of these out real quick so you can see how it works. I'll put a link down below uh, to this in case you're interested in getting them. We have them on just about all of our hoses and all of our spigots as well. Very, very handy to have. The way these work is uh, it's got uh, male and female and it opens up. So this is the male, this is the female. This one has this that opens and closes just like this. Uh, so in order to attach it, you pull that back a little bit and, and push this in there. And it's a whole lot easier whenever you have a water hose connected to it because you've got more of uh, something to hang on to. So everyone that we've gotten so far has worked. Uh, they look the same and they work uh, just fine with each other. Now I'm gonna take this end and we'll put in here. It's already got a hose washer in here. But it just screws on there. Um, so it's, it's already done. Uh, I'll probably leave it on there. So I might come back later and tighten it up with a wrench, make sure it's good and tight so the kids don't take it off and lose it. I've got this on here, I'm gonna come. The water is already on, so you'll see what it looks like, uh, but I'm gonna come and take it off over here and then we'll put it on this one right here. So for this drip tape, what you have to have is a little hose or a little regulator. I think from the well, it puts out about 40 PSI. It puts about 35 or 40 pounds of pressure. I'm not really sure, uh, but it's significantly more than 10 pounds of pressure. And I think you're supposed to re reduce it down below 15 pounds of pressure. And this regulator uh, reduces it down to 10 pounds of pressure. So we've got it right here. And then on the other side of it, uh, we have this, uh, this quick connect. So uh, it's really not best because sometimes you get a little wet doing it this way. Uh, it's not best to do it while you have it turned on, but I wanna show you what happens when you do. See, there you go. So it disconnects pretty easily. I'll put it over here on this other side where I just put the male quick connect on uh, and uh, show you how to put it back. Before I do that, I wanna show you how dry it is right here. We haven't had any rain in a few days. It's probably fine uh, because I still see a little bit of moisture, uh, just a little bit. So underneath right here, maybe an inch or two down, it's probably got uh, some moisture to it. But I'm gonna go ahead and irrigate this because I wanna try to help this come free, these cuttings as much as I can uh, as we first get started on it. So uh, let me bring it over here and let you see it connected. So again, here is the water hose. The water's coming out, 10 pounds of pressure. And all you gotta do is pull this back and push this in. And when you've got the water running, sometimes you get a little wet doing it, but that's okay. Uh, I don't mind it. And the, the valve to turn it off is all the way over there. And it's connected. And it's not leaking much at all either. So these are really, really very handy. Uh, so some of our valves are down on the ground to keep them from freezing in the winter time. Those uh, definitely have quick connects on there because to screw them on and off afterwards every time is very difficult. But these quick connects, just pull it back and push it in there. Very, very easy. And I'll show you in a few minutes what this looks like. But in the meantime, I want to show you these Jerusalem artichokes over here. I think every survival homestead should have Jerusalem artichokes on there. And I've got a lot over here in my property line hedgerow food forest. I'll take you over there in just one second. But I planted several over here in this field. I don't even know where I planted them all. This is about September of 2019. No, this is September of 2020. This is September of 2020, and I planted these out here in this field, most of these around uh, January of 2019, I believe. And uh, 
Some of them I kind of tilled over and did a few things. They just kind of disappeared. That's okay, I've got plenty of them. I'm gonna do more and more and more. But I've been waiting for them to flower and they just did a couple of days ago. So you see these flowers, they're in the sunflower, the helianthus family. And uh, this is one of the ways that you know what they are, that these are Jerusalem artichokes. Uh, they're often kind of high. Uh, these are only about six foot tall at the tallest. Uh, maybe uh, six and a half foot tall back here because I'm about five foot eleven. If you want to have more tubers, you can cut these flowers off and it'll put more energy back down into the tubers instead of doing this. Uh, but if you want to give the bees some food late in the season, uh, these are really great for that. So uh, one of the reasons I think you should have these is because you have to do absolutely nothing and they create a great crop and they'll keep on coming back year after year after year. You see several of them behind me and uh, I've got them all the way up here. I planted a bunch of them up here in my hedgerow food forest, property line hedgerow food forest. I'm gonna try to move some of these this year, but others I might kinda of till in because I wanna get rid of some other stuff and I wanna help control some weeds some as well. Uh, so the ones right here at the very south end, that's uh, this is south. Our property is south of this residential area just north of us. Anyway, these over the very south side, uh, I may uh, leave where they are. I may till them in so it creates more of them and gets rid of some of this other stuff. The ones up here closer to the black locusts and the mulberries and the arbor vitaes and the red buds and the wild plum and the nanny berries, those ones up there, I'm going to try to move all those and get them out of the way and then mulch around where all those trees are this winter whenever I'm not going to kill the Jerusalem artichokes. I can harvest them and move them somewhere else and then I can uh, uh, mulch around those things right there. But uh, they'll just keep coming back year after year. They're a great survival crop. So while that's irrigating, I wanted to tell you about these and I wanted to show you what they look like when they're flowering as well. They're very, very beautiful. Uh, have a little extra pop of color. If I weeded around some of these other things and it would have even more of them. There's a lot of them up here, but uh, uh, I'm probably going to try to uh, cut down on some of these wild blackberries up here and some of these other things that are up here as well. If you don't have Jerusalem artichokes, I suggest that you get them. I'm going to uh, propagate them more and more and more as well, so maybe I can sell them in the future as well. Uh, but I think that they are really great for a survival homestead. If you're interested in uh, preparedness and you're interested in survivalism, this is something you ought to grow. So this has been running about an hour. I didn't time it exactly. I uh, went and took care of a couple things in the house, got a load of clothes hung up and sorted some towels and stuff. Anyway, uh, I wanted to show you what it looks like after it's been dripping for an hour. Now, that's one thing I really kind of like about this drip tape is that it does it really slowly. It doesn't overwhelm the soil. It doesn't, uh, you know, mess it up any at all. So it's done perfectly. This is about an hour. And now I'm going to move it over, which is a task. And I want to show you what it's like. I didn't show you last time. I'm going to move it over to this other section. Looks like that only took a couple of minutes to do and I'll leave it here for another hour and then I'll show you what I'm going to do whenever I put it back over here. It's really quite simple. These quick connects are really something I can't recommend enough to you. Uh, they work uh, really wonderfully. They save a whole lot of time. Uh, they're not the cheapest thing. I think uh, it's they're about uh, $2 for a set or maybe three. I'm not sure. Uh, but you only have to buy them once and then you can use them over and over and over again. We also use them for nozzles sometimes, you know, put the nozzles on the quick connect and then just be able to connect them as soon as we want them. Very, very easy. If you want to save some time and frustration on your homestead uh, and you have several, um, several hoses and several different spigots on your homestead, especially if you have a larger place, then this is something that's really handy. If I can remember to, I'm going to put a link down in the description below. If you like things like this, like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, select all so you never miss a notification. Thanks. All right, it's been about another hour. This is pretty close to finish. Just wanna get good moist so those root cuttings will start to uh, uh, to uh, sprout. Um, I haven't seen any of them sprout yet. Uh, as I've already showed you, there's a few of the crowns that have sprouted uh, leaves. So they're superior if you wanna grow something fast, if you wanna grow something even faster, have the crowns with the roots. So uh, that's a whole plant. I'm gonna show you one more time what it does or how to, uh, to move it and what happens then. So again, all you gotta do is just pull this back, and there you go. And then just connect it right back. Pull this thing back. And sometimes 
Sometimes it doesn't click back very well. There's ball bearings in there and sometimes they get stuck so you have to make sure it pushes back, especially uh, whenever you're doing it with the water running. But now the irrigation is running in here and uh, well, I'll run it in here probably for another hour, hour and a half. Uh, just get it good and moist. I want everything to get watered in pretty well and then I'll turn it off. But again, those quick links are really handy. That's what the whole video is supposed to be about, the quick links. I'm trying to show you my process of what I do in here. I hope you like things like this. Uh, keep on coming back for more. We do new videos Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. A live stream on Sunday night at 8 p.m. Central Time. And every now and then we might do a bonus video depending on how things go and if there's anything exciting going on. Thanks.